Well, here we are again on our four uh, priority study. We're in chapter number 25. I can hardly believe that your culture and your calling. So let's dig in. Often I believe that the culture has a greater impact on us than we as follower of Jesus have on it. Very important thought. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, gives us a very uh, interesting insight about impacting the culture or the impact of the culture on us. When it says this from the J.B. Phillips paraphrase, it says, do not let the world squeeze you into its own mold. So often I think we're squeezed into the mold of the culture. Uh, when you ask Jesus Christ into your life, and he takes up residence in you, his focus is to change you, to mold you into his image. When you come to Christ, whenever that was, you need to understand that that was only the beginning. It wasn't the end. It begins a process where he literally wants to transform our lives. Someone asked me one time, so what is the goal of the Christian life? Does the Bible say anything about that? Well, I think it does. If you look up Romans 8, 29, you will discover this is what it says. The goal of the Christian life, and I'm paraphrasing this, is to, be, is to become like Jesus. Uh, the scripture says uh, to be conformed to the image of Christ, to become like Jesus. And so therefore, Jesus, I believe, is more interested in the person that I'm becoming than what I do. But here's the kicker that the more we become like Jesus as we live with him and walk with him, and as he transforms us from the inside out, that will have a deep impact on what we do. And so therefore, um, as we talk about this calling, if you go back to chapter 25, you'll remember this, that our primary calling is to follow Jesus. And as we follow Jesus, two things will happen. First of all, we will become more like him. Secondly, he will begin to help us understand that the things that are on his heart need to be on our heart. Another way to say that is the things that break the heart of Jesus should break our hearts. And so Jesus came into the world with an objective. His objective was to change it by changing people. The scripture says in uh, 1 Timothy 1.15, this is a true saying and everyone should believe it. This is the apostle Paul speaking. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and I was the worst of them all. He had an objective. His objective was to come into the world to save sinners. It says in Luke uh, chapter 19 verse 10, Jesus has revealed that he had come to seek and to save that which was lost. So he came to save sinners, and he came to save the lost. Lost in the sense that we're disconnected from the God that created us. Jesus came to change the planet, and he knew that to change the planet, you have to change people. So often in our culture, we just don't go deep enough. We just rearrange the mess, and we don't go to the real heart of the matter, which is to change the heart. And that's what Jesus came to do. So therefore, uh, here's an amazing thing. He wants to use you and he wants to use me in the process of getting people to him so he can love on them and so he can change them. Um, in Matthew 4.19, the scripture says that Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men not fishers of money, not fishers of stuff, not fishers of reputation, not fishers of power or prestige, but of men. Jesus wants to use men and women who follow him to also be used in the process of helping other men and women come to know him. You know, fishing is, is, is uh, I have a lot of friends that love to fish. I like to fish. I don't love to fish. But there are a lot of analogies that come out of fishing that will help us with this whole thing where Jesus said, become a fisher of men. And um, one of my friends years ago, a guy named Bob Hewitt in Orlando, Florida, lined up a fishing trip. And he, we've been working on this trip for a long time. And 
Finally, we, we got in the SUV with a boat behind us and headed south to the southwest part of the state of Florida, a little area called Chukalusky, to go fishing. Well, Bob was amazing. And he says, as a person and as a fisherman, he loved to go fishing. He loved to take people fishing. And the kind of fish we were looking for in that area of Florida was snook. Now, snook are an unbelievable fish. And I was told that as soon as they hit that bait and get that hook, they absolutely go down to the bottom as far as down as they can go. So it is a fight. You have a battle on your hand. So he also, as I reflected back, taught me some things about how to fish successfully, but also those same principles can be used in terms of how to be a fisher for Jesus, for men and women. So let me talk about a couple of those characteristics or traits of a great fisherman and how that relates to being a fisher of men. First of all, a real man who fishes is uh, positive. A real man who fishes is positive. This is the person, uh, and this is the way Bob was. Today is going to be today. Boy, we're going to get the big one today. They're going to be biting like crazy today. Well, by the time I'm out in that boat getting ready to cast in, I'm on fire. I can't wait. Positive. In the same way, Jesus says, I want you to be positive because you are positively convinced that men and women need Jesus. And that positive outlook is critical in being a fisher of men and women for Jesus Christ. Secondly, Bob said, you got to be persistent. You don't give up. I remember when we went out the first day, that first afternoon, really, we only caught two little old skinny trout. Uh, I mean, it was nice to get the skinny trout, but we didn't get the big snook. But the next day, because Bob was persistent, that afternoon, we got the mother load. In the same way, Jesus is saying here, never, never, never give up on someone who needs to know Jesus. Be persistent. Thirdly, a real man who fishes is patient. Bob was always patient with fishing and with me uh, because I was a little impatient. Uh, he used a lot of different methods also. If one bait didn't work, or one lure didn't work, he put another one on till finally he was successful. In the same way, Jesus says, patiently love people to me. Stick with them. Never give up. Keep after it. Be patient, just like he's patient with you and me. The third or the fourth thing Bob said is a, a real fisherman is passionate. Bob had a passion for fishing and he had a passion for catching snook. And I remember that afternoon when things began to happen, when we found some success, he said, all right, we're going to get out of the boat. We're going to wade in shallow water and we're going to catch some snook. And I mean, within minutes, bam, they started hitting us, hitting that bait uh, because Bob was passionate, we started being successful in the same way. Jesus wants us to be passionate about him and about fishing for those who don't know his son, Jesus Christ. And so there it is, positive, persistent, patient, and passionate. Are you like that with people? And for those who don't know Christ, well, you think about that real hard. Thanks for listening to the Four Priorities Podcast. This podcast, along with the Four Priorities book, are designed to aid, support, and encourage you in your work of making disciples. If you haven't purchased your copy of the Four Priorities, you can do so at www.thetolstongroup.com. Please subscribe to this podcast and follow John on social media for more resources and teaching. See you next time on the Four Priorities Podcast.